we actually started on time for a check. I know, but look at that. I'm standing here. Ten seconds to go. Actually this is the first ready. time ever. Good. Um, if we haven't met you, my name is Ruth. And I'm Tony, and we lead the church together, and it is wonderful to welcome you here into this space. If you're new here, uh, don't go without saying hello. If you're uh, visiting, you're most welcome. We hope you uh, really enjoy our time together this morning. It's so great to see so many faces, old and new. It's been such a long time since we've been together as all our congregation uh, for a really long time because uh, of the building work and meeting in two different spaces. So it's amazing to be together for the purpose of worshiping Jesus together. It is amazing. It's brilliant. A few housekeeping. Yeah, Um, a few housekeeping things. If you need the toilets, there is one there, um, fairly soundproof. There's more down the corridor <laughs> there. It's soundproof, if you guys. Prefer. We're not listening out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do uh, use those if you need them. There is a space at the back with some quiet toys if uh, any green numbers need a space to go. But please don't worry about noise and chaos. Um, when I was explaining uh, to Bishop Jeff PA about how the day was going to look today, I said it's probably going to be organised chaos. Um, so don't worry, it's going to be fine. If you need noises made, do not worry, parents especially, uh, just feel at home here. Thank you. I think that's everything. That is everything. Okay. Our plan today is we're going to worship, we're going to um, explore uh, the Palm Sunday story, we're going to worship some more, and we're going to share communion together. And we're going to have a great celebration, thanking God for this uh, incredible space we have to be able to worship together. The words will be up on the screen. The words will all be up on the screen. Follow. Just follow that. Um, anything generally in bold and yellow, everyone join in with. Everything else, uh, one of us will say. Can I invite you, if you're able, to please stand? Why don't we close our eyes for a moment? As we gather here, I wonder what is it you're thankful for today? thank you Lord God. We thank you that we can meet here in this space today. Lord we thank you for all the hard work, prayer, resources that's gone into creating this space. Jesus we pray that this space would be filled with your presence. That as we worship here today we would know your presence here with us. Ultimately, it's not about the building, it's about you, God. Now we want to lift your name high today. We long to worship you because you are the one who is worthy.
grab a seat. It's lovely to uh, have uh, Bishop Jeff, the acting Bishop of Southampton, here with us. I'm going to invite him on up. Uh, and I also just wanted to invite uh, a couple of others. Uh, we have Angus and Julie up, please. We would love you to come up. Um, we would love Dave to come up, please. I know you're going to love that, Dave. <laughs> come on, Dave, up you come. Um, and Brian and Sandra, where are you? Come on. <laughs> Great. We would also love for anyone who has been part of our SRG, the big, or PCC, could you stand up where you are, please? We would love for you all to give these people the hugest round of applause. We have the hours that these people have prayed and spent dreaming and sort of thinking the big picture for this space has been absolutely incredible and we have so many people to thank and you guys as you pray for the build it doesn't even think enough just to say thank you we do need to say a huge thank you to dave dave has been our site manager from mount joy uh... <laughs> dave is not happy <laughs> dave has been particularly meticulous the last two weeks he's worked i think seven days uh, for every uh, seven days a week for the last two weeks at least. Uh, being here, I think you get here about half past five in the morning and uh, he's the last one out. Um, he has been absolutely incredible and we are so thankful it to you, Dave. It has been a joy to work with you. You have been a fantastic person. We're so grateful for the way that you've led the team and that are working in here with such respect and kindness. We're really grateful to you. A little thank you from us to you. <laughs> And a little something for your good lady for putting up with all the late nights and early mornings. Thank you. <laughs> but Bishop Jeff, it feels really special to be in this space again. And it'd be lovely just to dedicate it. Absolutely. Oh, it's on. It's always very dangerous giving a bishop a microphone like this. <laughs> they can Give still turn it down. <laughs> It is fantastic being back here. I first came to Bitten Church when Paul Harris was the vicar. Who remembers Paul Harris? Hey, still going strong. Us retired, we keep it going, don't we? Thank you, Angus. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, it is a joy to be here and just to see this amazing transformation, to know how much God is at work in Bitten and the surrounding areas, all right, there, you know, there, there. I've even met a couple who've come from across the river. Oh, they live over near the university. Can you believe it? And they hadn't got their passports with them. It's just brilliant seeing so many people and just to remind ourselves how God has blessed us here. To have a building, a space like this, right in the heart of the precinct, the number of people that pass through that precinct every day, and to have this space now open and available. I'm thinking very seriously about the armchair um, aerobics. aerobics. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm, There's I'm up for that. There's a space available for you. Always well, well, do Get my own arm to pry. I've actually got my own armchair over there, haven't you I? Have, yeah. <laughs> we can carry that one up for you. We can carry that one up for me. <laughs> very seriously, so much we want to give thanks for today. And I bring greetings from Bishop Philip, our diocesan bishop. Um, he's gradually getting himself involved in, in the diocese and uh, I know he's looking forward to coming, if he gets invited, of course, down to meet you all here in Bitten at some point. Um, he'd love to be with you. And he also sends his blessing and his congratulations. So let's just say a huge thank you to all of these people who've been mentioned, who've been part of this. A thank you to all of you who have had the absolute inspiration to go through with this project, as well as actually contributing financially, raising money for it. All the necessary things have been done. But I think on behalf of us all, we would want to say a huge thank you. Obviously, Angus started it off, but also to Tony and Ruth for the way they've seen this through. So thank you both very much. Indeed. That's enough. We can't get any big headed, can we? So now we're going to say thank you to God. And please don't worry about standing. Just sit there, but let's just have a moment of prayer. 
So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful space. May it always be a place where we can sing your praise, where we can find your spirit, where all are welcome. We pray that this will continue to be such a blessing to the people of this parish here in Bitten, but surrounding as well, that all may come to find more about the love that you have for them. And in a more formal way, O oh God, source of all goodness, we thank you for our life and breath, for those we love and those who love us. Bless our church and parish and all we do to follow the way of Christ and draw others to you in work, pleasure and worship, that we may freely give of ourselves as we have freely received all things. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. so much. Just give a final round of applause to these guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dick and John. Now, children, I know you have been armed with some bubbles, and I'm going to need you in a moment to make as many bubbles blow around. Make sure the adults get covered in bubbles. That's your job, basically. Um, because I think bubbles are really helpful. Bubbles help us, uh, they're a bit like our prayers, as, as we bring our prayers before God, as, as they sort of start to be formed, we uh, lift them up, bubbles travel upwards generally, then, then start to drop, so that analogy runs out there. But one of the things I love about bubbles, especially when it comes to a time of confession, is that just as we bring our prayers to God, we're reminded that Jesus has dealt with it. When we say sorry to him, it's done. Like a bubble pops and disappears, so is our guilt and shame taken away by Jesus. All that he's done for us on the cross. So we've got a few pictures on the screen that will hopefully uh, prompt us to think about um, things we want to say sorry to God for. And I wonder if they might help you. Maybe you've had a bit of a disagreement with someone or said an angry word. Maybe like that man in the picture, you're, you've walked past those in need, looking the other way. Or maybe, as we think about it, it's something to do with our world and the mess we've made of it. Or maybe we're here today feeling like a relationship is broken. We're feeling a bit heartbroken, perhaps. I wonder if we can just take a moment to close our eyes and just think and lift our prayers before God. What is it we're saying sorry to him for today? And so there's some words. I'm going to say the line, we are sorry. And I'd love you to join in with saying, Jesus, we are sorry. But this is your time, children. Let's make the bubbles. And as we say sorry to God, we're going to remember that we can just pop those bubbles if any come near us. And remember, we're forgiven. Jesus has died for us. So let's pray. Children, get blowing those bubbles. Jesus, for when we have messed up, when we fail to speak up in your name or to use kind words, we are sorry. Jesus, we are sorry. Jesus, we know that there's so many times when perhaps we uh, don't do what we ought to do, where we don't help people when we ought to help, when we walk by on the other side hoping that someone else might deal with it. We are sorry. Jesus, we are sorry. Jesus, we know that so many uh, times we make decisions, either in uh, what we do and how we treat things or what we buy and how we dispose of things that cause damage to your world. We are sorry. Jesus, we are sorry. And Lord God, we know so often 
we end up hurting with broken relationships through words that have been said, actions that have been done, thoughts that have been thought. We thank you that you heal us, you heal the brokenhearted. Today, Jesus, would you heal our broken hearts? We are sorry. Jesus, we are sorry. And so may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Fantastic. Good work with the bubbles. Make sure they're all popped. And we are going to um, do the only thing that we can possibly do when we realise how forgiven we are, and that is to worship and say thank you to God. So if you're able, let's stand and let's worship.
Uh, do grab a seat and we've got Howard who's going to come and share with us some God's word and then Sadok is going to come and uh, explain what that might mean for us.
On this day, we remember the time that Jesus approached and his disciples approached Jerusalem, their Bethsaida, and Bethany through to the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem. But on this day, he told his disciples, go on ahead of me, go on ahead of us, and go into the village, and there you'll find a young donkey, tied up, that no one had ever ridden. Go and get it. And if the owner asks you, or the person that's responsible asks you, who's it for? What are you doing? Just say the Lord needs it. So they went into the village, found said donkey, and there was someone there who said, what are you doing with the donkey? And they said, oh, the Lord needs it. Okay. So they went back and took the donkey back to Jesus. Remember, it's never been ridden before. They didn't have saddles. They took their cloaks and put it on the donkey, and Jesus gets on the donkey and rides it into Jerusalem. It's a young donkey. He's a big bloke. He's an adult. It's very silly. It's not a big donkey. It's just ridiculous. But Jesus did it for a reason. Because he knew that the people who were meeting there, because it's coming up to Passover, there's lots of people around. He knew that they knew their Old Testament, their Hebrew Bible. And he knew that they knew what the prophet Zechariah said, which was this. It says, speak to a daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, lowly, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on a baby donkey. And the people recognized it. And Jesus did this perhaps as, as a coat, so they knew, would it? But perhaps, something to think about, because the Romans wouldn't have known that. Anyway, so, he's riding on this thing on donkey, and there's a response. People respond. And you're going to help me that response in a minute, but we'll get there. The first thing they do is two things. The first thing they do is they lay some items on the road. And they lay their cloaks on the road. To prepare it, like an impromptu red carpet we've had. Some of them, I think, were more sensible, and when that road is muddy, and it's got all sorts of things, and there's a donkey about to ride on it, so I'll cut down some palm branches and put those on the road instead, an impromptu carpet. And the second thing they did, they were really noisy, and you're going to help me with this. So this side of it, you're going to be my blessed side, okay? And this side, you're going to be my Hosanna side. So when I point to you, you're going to say, blessed or Hosanna, really loudly, as loud as you can. Got it? Three, two, one, go. Blessed. Three, two, one. Hosanna. Brilliant. So, firstly, blessed. blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's one of the things they said. And secondly, the highest heaven is the coming kingdom of our father David Amen. to the king of David to the king of Israel. These are provocative statements. It upset some people. It probably made the Romans a bit nervous too. But more importantly, it made the Pharisees really nervous as well. Because it just upset them. How dare was someone was pulling the stunt on them. They, uh, this is their place. They didn't like it. And they said to Jesus, so cause your, your disciples to be quiet. And he said, I could, but even the stones would cry out louder than they would. Perhaps these stones around us would do the same thing if we were quiet. Thank you, Howard. Hello, everyone. I'm Sadok. I'm the Kids and Youth Minister. I'm so happy. And let me start with a very deep and very important biblical question for you all. Was the only tree that can fit in your palm. Was the only tree that can fit in your palm. Come on. No. It's a palm tree. Well done, kids. <laughs> the palm tree. That's my dad's job for this morning. It's a palm tree. Yes. And today we're thinking about palm tree. So Sunday, Palm Sunday, you know. Um, how we just did amazing about taking us to all these little readings. And now, I want you to picture this, the following thing. That you are setting, get, preparing a surprise party. What are the things that you need for this surprise party? Do you need to get in your, in your checklist? What are the things you need? Okay. You need a cake? Yes, yeah, yeah, so you need better to call and arrange a good cake for a surprise party. What else do you need? Balloons, of course, we need balloons, otherwise it's not, it's not a party, come on guys, we need balloons, just a... We need a party paint, so, so you need to make a big list of all your friends and families and neighbors you want to invite to your party, and then to write cards, save the date, please, and please can you confirm that you're coming, 
to make number for cake, for balloons. What else do you need? What else do you need for a surprise party? Sausages, rolls. Oh, God. That's one of the delicatessens I just discovered here in the UK. I just love them. And uh, I cannot have enough sausages rolls, so please bring sausages rolls for the party. What else we need for the party? This guy, you guys are very quiet this side. Come on, I need someone here. Have you been in a party? Yes, you have. Candles, yes, of course. All, all the candles for the party, what else was? People, yes, to make sure that they are there, Olivia. What else for the party? Cakes, yes, have us, have us, much cakes. Now, one more. Food. Now, imagine the silly thing. Yes, Liz. Music. Come on, let's go. Yes. Latinos, we love music in our parties, and we go loud and big with music. So now, now the silly thing. Now, imagine that you're setting all this secret surprise party, but the party is for yourself. So you're doing all that for yourself. You are sending cards, calling the cake shop, and you are making sure the bowls are ready. Okay, can you have this ready? It's in the Holy Savior Church for this and that, that day, this time. Be there, but you know that this surprise party is for yourself. How does that sound? Sounds a bit, a bit silly, isn't it? You're making a surprise party for yourself. I always, when I read this passage about Jesus coming to Jerusalem, riding this uh, little donkey and with this massive crowd on the loud, I always, I would believe that it was, you know, an impromptu moment. But you know what? It's Jesus in charge of everything. He's the one who is planning everything, who's the one who is orchestrating this, the whole situation. He knows where to get the donkey. He knows that the people in that town, because in that town is where Mar Mary, Martha, Lazarus, so eh, people in that town are going to follow him. The crowd is going to be ready because they know that he ordered to bring the donkey to him. He knows the perfect day. He knows the crowd is ready. He knows what he needs, and he's getting ready for his beat entry to Jerusalem. So, you know, there is nothing that is taking Jesus by surprise. There is nothing that is taking Jesus by everything is happening by accident. No, it's Jesus in charge of everything. So when he gets into the Jerusalem riding this little donkey, Howard explained a little bit to us how significant it was. And three things happened. People shout, Hosanna! It was like a big, like a, like a hip, hip. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, it was like a big hip, hip. Yes, it was like that. So when Jesus comes to, to, to Jerusalem riding the donkey, he, all the people, they throw their, their coat. And you remember, this coat was probably one if a life in a lifetime. So it was a big significance. And they remember, few of them, or probably nobody of them, remember what was the very real significance of this. They were all, all expecting a savior, a king coming to them. And they shout Hosanna to the son of David. They throw the clothes and they, they, they pull the palm branches and they wave the palm branches and put it on the floor like a red big uh, carpet for the big victorious entry of Jesus. That when you look at it very carefully, it doesn't feel that triumphal. You know, in the Bible, the title is always tri triumphal, but when you look at it, it doesn't feel triumphal. You know what? Because all these grown-ups, all these people in Jerusalem, they honestly, they forgot all about it. They are expecting a king to deliver him from the Roman Empire. They are expecting a king that works for their purposes. They are expecting a king that will come and serve for them. We don't want to be under the Roman Empire. Can you please come and make us free? Can you please come and make my life better? Can you please come and remove all the things I really don't like it? Can you please be my, being everything, you know, easy for life? So they forgot all about the important things. So it's a big, it's a big first Hosanna. It's a big first hooray that Jesus encountered with these people. But you know what? It's a hooray that dissolved in the air very quickly. It's like a, one of these bubbles we were playing, like a whoo, and then pop in the air. There's not much meaning be, behind that first hooray that Jesus encountered. And Jesus kept going with the little donkey journey, keep going, and he arrived in the temple. And you know why everything is cheering? Hey, Jesus is here. 
You know, it's someone that looks sad. And in the Matthew Gospel, he comes into the tale, details and he tells that Jesus is actually crying. He's, he's, he's looking at everyone and he's not feeling welcome. He knows that these people that are cheating, who raised who to Jesus in a week, they're going to be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. It's how Hosanna that is, feels empty. But when he reached the temple, there is a second hooray. And I want to hear all the kids. Come on, kids. Are you ready? Young people, I want to hear your hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Again, hip, hip. Hooray. Well done. So Jesus arrived in the temple, and he find the kids. And as Jesus is so upset what he just discovered in the temple, and he start throwing the tables, and then the kids start to worship in Jesus and say, Hosanna to the king, son of David. It's without Hosanna. They're, all the kids start praising Jesus. And you know what, what happened with this second Hosanna? Jesus acknowledged the fact, the Hosanna. And he takes the worship. And the, and the leaders, religious leaders, ask him, why don't do you just chop their mouths, Jesus? Can you hear why they're shouting? That's not well. That's not correct. And Jesus says something so powerful. If they close their mouth, the stones will start shouting and praising me, praising the Lord. So Jesus received this second Hosanna. The Hosanna that comes from a child's heart. The Hosanna, the Hosanna that comes from a kid's mouth. And he, you remember that God invites us to welcome him like one of them. When we, when we welcome Jesus, Jesus said, welcome me like one of the little ones. This is one that embraced me for who I am, for all that Jesus' kingdom means. So today, uh, we are thinking about this king coming, riding a donkey with all the significance. We look at the first Hosanna of people that don't, probably is not, doesn't have a clue. Don't, they don't honestly remember the meaning of this. And then we look at the second Hosanna of the kids worshiping Jesus. And then, how are we? I just want to ask you today. Jesus is coming to us. And you know what's the, what is the lovely thing? That Jesus comes gentle. Gentle, riding a little donkey. Gentle, but bold. With a bold message, like a, crown me or crucify me. But this is me. This is one, the, one of the things you can do. You can crown me today. Or you can just crucify me. And Jesus comes gentle in the donkey, right into to Jerusalem. And today is, Jesus is doing the same. How are you welcoming Jesus into your life? Sometimes we, we welcome Jesus, the part that we really like about him. We welcome the healer. We welcome the powerful. We welcome that God that can fix my life. We welcome Jesus, the wise teacher. We welcome some part of him. But Jesus comes to our life to be crowned as a king, not to be part of your kingdom, to be part of my little kingdom. He wants to be the crown, the king in our heart. How, how are you welcoming Jesus today? Today is a day, and Jesus is walking among us. Jesus is here walking among us, gentle. But he's asking you, Crown me, crown me as your king. I am the gentle, the loving king. So it's today my opportunity to surrender my life, all the little tiny kingdoms I have in my heart. To say, oh, I, I really don't want to give you this part of my life, Jesus. I really, please don't bother with this. You can be my Sunday, Jesus, but don't bother with my Monday to Saturday. You can be my, fix my, my family, but don't bother about my, how I do this, how I do that. So Jesus is coming to us. How are we welcoming? We can shout the first Hosanna, the Hosanna that people shout to him, like, come as a king and work for me. Please take away the Roman Empire. Please do this for me. Or we can do like a second Hosanna, the kids shouting, Hosanna, worship Jesus and embrace his kingdom. 
So today, I just want to invite you to think about it. Jesus is coming today to you. How are we welcome him? Let's just think for a moment. Let's just pray. Let's pray one second. Jesus, we thank you that you are a gentle king and that your kingdom is building here in Beecher and here in Holy Savior. And Father, we want to welcome you as you are and we want to crown you in our life. So Father, help us to be like that second Hosanna with the kids, how the kids embrace you, how the kids praise you from their hearts and surrender their life to you. Father, give us everything we need to give you our, our life. We need you to crown you as king. Be welcome into our hearts. We want to welcome you into our hearts this morning. Amen. We're going to respond in a moment by sharing in communion together. When it comes to communion this morning, all are welcome to uh, come and receive. There will be two stations, um, so one each side. Um, if you require gluten-free, then come to me. I'll be on this side. Um, do come to me. I've got gluten-free. Uh, otherwise, everyone is welcome to come uh, and receive. If you'd prefer just simply a prayer of blessing, that's uh, wonderful. Just ask one of us. We'd love to pray for you. Uh, if you uh, would prefer to not take uh, the wine from the cup, that's okay as well. Taking bread is absolutely fine. So some words will hopefully appear. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your son to live among us, Jesus our savior, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. And so let's pray together as Jesus told us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we await for his coming in glory. For honor and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
So in a moment, the uh, band will lead us in a time of worship, and then do just come on up to wherever is closest. But if I could just invite the band to come up to receive, uh, and those who are helping. And as we um, come and receive communion today, it's Palm Sunday. We've got some palm crosses, that reminder of what Jesus has done for us. Uh, there's some young people with uh, palm crosses here at the front. If you'd like to take one after you've received, then please do. If you don't get a chance now, there will be around at the end as well. But do uh, take a palm cross with you. So if you're ready, why don't you stand and let's uh, worship together and come and receive. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, i It is well 
with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the finish shall be signed. The clouds be brought back as the snow. The drum shall resound. stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. So we're going to pray together the prayer that will appear on the screen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. We're drawing towards the end, but we've got a few uh, things to notice. To note. Oh, yeah. You get that? I'll go. I wonder, can I invite up Heine Inagechi and Jamachi and the whole family? Come on up. This is very exciting. This is like one of our favorite things to do. When there's a new baby in our community, it's so exciting. This is baby Jamachi. He's nearly, what, must be three months old now? Yeah. It's the he first opportunity for cute. us to welcome you. Should Ruth, we do was, a... Ruth was cross because I got a hug first. He did. From him. <laughs> I ran. Look at him, he is just so cute. Oh my days. Look so, uh, what does Jamachi mean? To keep praising God. What an amazing name. We'd love to pray for you guys. For some wisdom in how um, he's brought up. For some good sleep. 
<laughs> and for you just all as a family. <laughs> You're Ruth. like, yes, yes, that's a good <laughs> prayer, guys. <laughs> Everyone get praying for some good sleep. Ruth, why don't you pray? Father, we thank you so much for this family. Thank you for Jamachi and the blessing that he will be to this family. We just pray you'd guide them. Pray as a family they'd feel really protected and guided by you and blessed by you. Thank you for the blessing of this new life. We just pray you'd go before them. We pray for Jamachi's life that he will come to fall in love with you. And we just praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for you. Amen. Thank you so much. Should we give Jamachi a little Let's welcome? Let's give him a welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, on the screen will appear a QR code. If you're visiting, uh, you can scan that to find out more about what's going on. Uh, you can also, um, from that, uh, give. If you'd like to give uh, towards the work and ministry of the church, you can, can do so through... Um, that QR code, there's also various different donation points as well. You can also just go to our website, holysaviour.church, and on there is loads of information, including loads of stuff that's happening this week. It's Holy Week, uh, which means uh, there's lots happening. Seven o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, on Facebook and YouTube, we've got reflections happening for you to join in and watch. You don't have to watch them at seven o'clock, you can watch them later, uh, or the next day even, if you want to be radical. Um, but those will be there for you. And then we're going to be here on uh, Monday, Thursday, and we're going to have a meal at, I think it's six o'clock. Is it six, Joe? What time's the meal? What time's the meal this week? Thursday. Six, six o'clock. Followed by a service Everyone at 7.30. Everyone is welcome. All are welcome for that. Um, and then on Good Friday, there's a walk of witness, uh, 10 o'clock meeting outside here. Uh, going around Bitten. Uh, alternatively, there's a, or as well as, there's a service uh, of Churches Together Love Southampton uh, gathering in Guildhall Square at 12 noon. Do come and join us there. And then the church will be open from two till three for an hour of reflection uh, and refreshments afterwards uh, on Good Friday. And Easter Sunday, we've got three services, 9.30, 11 o'clock, and then 7.30, worship night. Okay, we're going to try something, aren't we, Tony? We are. We're going to try and take a photo of everyone like this. Now, my arm isn't very long, guys, so I apologize if you're not in this photo, but if you could squash in, and it's just to celebrate and to mark this moment. So <laughs> if you can't see yourself in my tiny screen, <laughs> then you might not be in it. Um, standing up or sitting? Yeah, go for that. that, that. Sitting. Give okay, guys. Smile. Give us a big smile. Give us a cheers. Woo! Well done. Thank you very much. We're going to take another official one later um, we, in a moment. We love to celebrate people, don't we, in we do. this church. Freddie, could you please? Freddie is playing the drums today. Now, Freddie is amazing. It's also we, Freddie's 18th birthday. Um, go on, Freddie. Okay, we guys. We will allow you out of the cage today. You may come. Freddie. We love you're here for your 18th birthday. What a party for you. So kind of us. Now, um, we, what does that say? If you're having a party, you've got to have cake. Uh, Callum, have we got a cake coming? Let's sing. Oh, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You can take your cake into the cage or you can let us eat it. Uh, either. <laughs> or you can share it. It's Freddie, up to you. Have a great we day. We won't judge you. you. Awesome. So then, we're going to finish as we began with a time of worship <laughs> and uh, celebration as we sing our final song, um, 10,000 Reasons. Let's stand and let's worship together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like men of His blood, O my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. 
And so let's pray as we finish. Then feel free to take a piece of gold and glitter with you as you leave. If not, we'll be sweeping it up in the morning. Um, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this morning as we celebrate. It's been great to be able to worship together. If you didn't get a palm cross, you'd like one, they're more available at the front. I wonder if we could just turn around where we are and look towards Chris up on the uh, balcony there, and he's going to take a photo. If you're on the side aisles, you may need to just drift on in a little bit. Um, but let's all smile, give you a best... Give a best wave. Woo! Fantastic. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Take care.
Yeah.